CataractCoach.com. Do you need to go behind the eye well to remove the viscoelastic? Seems like a difficult maneuver. So we're used to this scenario. Capsule bag is empty, we'll fill it up with a cohesive viscoelastic, and now we'll inject our eye well into the capsule bag. And we've all done this maneuver, of course, many, many times during routine cataract surgery. But when we put this IOL in the capsule bag, this optic is going to trap some viscoelastic behind it. Now we've got about a five or five and a half millimeter diameter capsule rexus. That's a six millimeter optic. So do we need to actually go around the capsule rexus and under the IOL optic to get at viscoelastic like this? Notice how the eye well is lifted towards the ceiling of the room or towards the apex of the cornea. And once we remove the viscoelastic from behind the eye well, then we can clean up the anterior segment and remove the viscoelastic from the AC as well as the angle of the eye. And that looks great. So the question is, do you have to do it? And it depends on the case. If you're a new surgeon who's starting off, you've done less than 100 cataracts, it's perfectly acceptable to not do that, to just tilt or rock the optic back and forth and try to express as much viscoelastic as you can that way. But as you get better and better and more confident with your intraocular skills, it does become important to remove that viscoelastic. Look at this case. You see the toric IOL marks at the haptic optic junction, so this is certainly a toric lens. And now look, they're also diffractive rings. This is a trifocal toric IOL. Now, this IOL has to be placed at a very specific axis, and we have to center these diffractive rings exactly correct. Now, this IOL optic is slightly tacky, and it'll tend to stay where we put it. It'll stick to the capsule bag. But it'll only stick to the capsule bag if there's no viscoelastic there. Viscoelastic behind the optic will allow it to slide and move around, and we can have this torque lens shift to the wrong axis, or we can have the IOL optic rings shift out of the center of the visual axis. So in that case, certainly it's very important. Let's look at another one. Time to go under the IOL and remove viscoelastic, and again, you see there are diffractive rings. So the main reason we're avoiding um, leaving viscoelastic in the eye is that it's going to allow that eye well to shift. So if we really are careful to remove all the viscoelastic from the back surface of the eye well, from the posterior capsular surface, that'll allow the eye well optic to stick into position. There's also an, another issue, which is intraocular pressure. Retained viscoelastic in the eye can lead to high intraocular pressure after surgery. So we've all seen those post-op patients, they had a beautiful cataract surgery, and in the post-op period, immediately post-op day one or day three or even week one, the pressure's high. Usually after day one, two, three, the pressure's high in the eye because of retained viscoelastic. It's not from a steroid response. Remember, the IOP spike from a steroid response ends up coming at around the two-week mark after surgery or after beginning the use of topical steroids. So here you look at the video, another trifocal and toric IOL that has to be placed at a very specific axis in terms of rotation, plus we have to center the diffractive rings with those Purkinje images. So in this case, it's absolutely critical that you remove the viscoelastic from behind the optic. So if you're going to do a toric lens, a diffractive lens, a multifocal lens, a toric multifocal lens, all those, it's very important to remove viscoelastic. If you're doing a monofocal lens, it's not quite as critical. You may have issues with IOP spikes right after surgery. And this maneuver does take some practice. You're shifting the eye well within the capsule bag. And remember, you're lifting the eye well up towards the corneal apex. Let's show you one more video of going behind the eye well. So here's the eye well going in the capsule bag as it unfolds quite nicely. We'll rotate it around. It helps to keep the haptics like this 90 degrees away from your incision. That allows you to place your phaco probe in the subincisional area, get under the eye well optic, lift it towards the corneal apex, and then remove viscoelastic. Use a high flow and high vacuum setting on your IA machine. So again, important to lift the eye well optic up towards the corneal apex. That's the correct maneuver. Don't just shove the eye well towards the capsule bag equator. You want to have a proper technique here. 
So my opinion is if you're just starting off, first 100 cases, don't worry too much about it. You're probably just doing monofocal IOLs anyway, but certainly you do need to progress to the point where you are going behind the IOL to fully remove viscoelastic. It'll give your patients the best results.